Welcome to Super Talk, the podcast that scratches your superhero itch. Just two suburban dads nerding out over superhero stuff on the small screen and the big. Buckle up, people. Enjoy the ride. Let's get this party started. Got the YouTube going? YouTube is going. Let's do it. In three. Welcome to Super Talk, the weekly podcast dedicated to news and reviews of comic book media on the big and small screen. This is episode number 42. I'm your host, Brian Professor Pettis, and with me, as always, is my illustrious co-host, the Titanium One, Tony Estrella. Titanium... Professor, forty-two, the Jackie Robinson episode, right? Yes, it's this 40. is our Jackie Robinson episode number forty-two. Right, uh, feel pretty good about it, man. Uh, next episode will be the Halloween episode. Uh, we might dress up, we might not. I think I'm going to dress what, up. What do you mean? I don't think there's any might about it. Yeah, we're going to have to. Okay? <laughs> I think we have an obligation to dress up. But this is our Jackie Robinson episode number 42, so take us to school, Professor. Yeah, and before we get started, we're going to start by thanking the listeners that bring the show to you, and those are our patrons. Patreon.com slash supertalk. That's how you become a patron of the show, and you support the show directly. Um, as a matter of fact, episode 42, we're not too far away from a pretty big milestone. Um, we're going to be getting our anniversary episode here. Before too long, okay. and when we do, I think it's time for another patron give you, giveaway. I'm all about it. You, yeah, you just say the word, and I'll. Uh, so I think when I'll we ring the bell. when we get to our anniversary episode, uh, it's going to be another patron giveaway show. Anybody who has signed up to become a patron of the show um, will be part of that giveaway. We're going to ship some swag to our, our friends out there that are bringing the show to you. Um, so here's your chance. You want to become a patron of the show? Patreon.com/slash Super Talk. All you have to do is donate $1 per episode. I mean, you can probably sneeze and find four quarters. I mean, really, it's not that bad. And, and uh, you know, it really helps us out, and we appreciate those people out there that have already done it. And we're going we're gonna to send some love to you guys uh, in 10 episodes. It'll be a pretty fun episode for us to celebrate a year's worth of doing Super Talk. Those on board already, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And I did want, want to give another special shout-out to those people who watch us on YouTube you know, you guys have really, really ramped up the support. The number of people that watch this on YouTube every week, they check in with us. Uh, we really appreciate it. It really means a lot to us, and it helps this show out more than you know. Um, we're really trying to get the word out to anybody we can about this show and, and get more people um, viewing, listening, subscribing. Uh, so all that support, the likes and the subscribes, look, we really appreciate it, people, and, and thank you so much. Yeah, tell a friend. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, well, let's jump into this week's episode, and we'll start with the reviews. And we had one uh, new episode this week, and that was the uh, season finale of Titans, episode 13. Uh, we got the finale of season three for this iteration of the Titan show. Uh, what'd you think? Um, it's, you know... <laughs> <laughs> I thought the season started off like gangbusters. I thought uh, I thought it was great. The couple of episodes were fantastic. And I thought the reason why it was so fantastic is because the Titans were the Titans. They were a team. Uh, so in short, the best part about this is that it's over. And the worst part about it is that it's over. Um, so I don't I know that's kind of cryptic and I can get more into it. Um, but still, little details are driving me crazy. Uh, and details that you would think I would not like, like the whole Lazarus Pit rain. Well, let's talk about that. Okay, we can talk about that. But for me, I didn't mind that. It was comic bookish. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was something that in the comic book would happen. Um, now, you know, Greg Vire, our good friend Greg Vire, was telling me, you know, why didn't they just take Wayne Mayer as a group first and then do the Lazarus Pit? And I agree with him. Little details like that. Still, jumping the shark with the CPD, uh, all those police officers knowing where, where the, who Batman is and where the Batcave is really drives me crazy. Those little details drive me crazy. But, um, again, clean slate. They kind of ended the season tying up a lot of loose ends. And uh, it, it opens up for season four. I'm invested in these characters. And I know you are too, Professor. I, I know you like these characters. So am I. I'm invested in them. I love them. I think it's great. More, some more so than others. But um, it just lazy writing. 
It's just, uh, you know, lazy writing. Where's the creativity? Uh, I didn't mind the Lazarus Pit because it was very comic bookish, you know? Uh, I know it, it was off from the comic books, and they're kind of using the Lazarus Pit way too much. It was like this separate born again thing. Um, and now they've kind of created this whole Lazarus Pit. I, I don't know, but. Uh, just little details like that. The the cops in in Batcave, I just can't get over. I just I I know it's petty of me, but I just can't get over it. So let's talk about a, a few. And, and I'm I'm now on Titanium Street when it what? comes to this show. Uh, wow, this okay. episode really, I mean, bothered me. Yeah, with a, a few things it did. So I want to talk about those things in this episode. Then we can kind of do just like a season review type of thing. But. This particular episode, there was a there was a handful of things, and again, I know they were tying the show up. They were trying to finish out the season. They're trying to, you know, all the plots points that they had kind of developed all the way through the season. They were trying to reach a crescendo and you know, get to the end of the season. I get that, but some of the things just really bugged me. Number one, they ended episode twelve with Connor blowing up um, Blackfire's ship so she couldn't go home. Yep. And my thought was, whoa, is Connor going rogue? I mean, I mean, he's now against them. Now we're, they're going to have to fight Connor. And were you a little bit excited to see him kind of turn a little bad and yeah. show another side and of I him? And I was like, oh, here we go. Yes. And that could be a great Within problem. five minutes of the episode. Five minutes, five seconds. They had, oh, I understand why you would be upset and why you would do this. And it's okay, Connor. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. I just didn't want you to leave me. You and know, he, and, and I'm he like, forgave Dick Grayson for t- putting yeah, the that, that kryptonite happened. dust. Right. I mean, he's like, yeah, I know, Dick. You had to do what you had to do. And it's like literally what? within, like they set up this big conflict of him blowing up her spaceship. And I would think, well, they're, either one of them's pissed or both of them are pissed. And, you know, maybe he, they're going to have to like, you know, but literally within five minutes though. Oh, we forgive you. It's okay. Yeah. We're all one big great team again. And I'm like, oh, okay, that was kind of crazy. And then, how hot did Blackfire look in this episode? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, kids. Avert your ears. She is a fucking smoke show. I mean, I can't believe she might be off the show. I, I, I have a couple of you. You go ahead with your thought, but I have a couple of theories of who might not be in season four, and I'm a little upset about it. Yeah, we, we could. Um, the, the other, you know, kind of couple of things, you know, the Lazarus Pit thing. Um, look, I understand slight departures from comic book lore when it helps move the show forward and it helps kind of develop the plot, right, and all these other things. So uh, what they did, let's just describe what they did. Raven went into the lab. They, they, okay. Scarecrow sets off one of his bombs at the beginning of the episode, which has this toxin in it that basically yeah. kills uh, two to 3,000 people, they said. Yeah. It kills them. Yeah, it's not a fear toxin. It's That's like it. a deadly toxin. Right, and he yeah. and supposedly has, you know, 11 other bombs. More bombs throughout the city. Throughout the city that they're going to have to find and disable and all this other stuff. That his lackeys, the, the police, the whole police force, is now... Implanted them throughout the city. In his control? Yeah, I, I, you know. But they decide that well we can't we can't stop all the bombs. We need to take over uh, Wayne Manor again. That's the only way we're going to be able to stop him. So they figure that out. But they come up with this strategy of we need to we can't help the people who haven't been the, affected by the bomb. But we can help the people that have been affected by him. Oh, we can use the Lazarus Pit. So they go down to the Lazarus Pit and they come up with this idea of. Well, the Lazarus Pit has this regenerative... It can bring people back to life. Well, we can save these two to 3,000 people that were killed by this this toxin, and we'll just use the Lazarus Pit. Well, we can't bring 3,000 people to the Lazarus Pit. We have to bring the Lazarus Pit to them. So Raven goes down there, and I guess they, de- they decide that there's two pieces to the Lazarus Pit. There's the restorative, regenerative, regenerative chemicals... And then there's the evil spirits that are in there that that make you know that, that give people nightmares, and that's what happened to Dick Grayson. So she sucks out all of the evil spirits from the Lazarus Pit that cause nightmares, <laughs> and then Starfire creates some bubble and grabs the liquid, and then 
shoots it up into the sky and Connor then blows cold air so they have hot air and cold air and it creates a storm and then it rains down on these people and it cures them or it brings them back to life rain brings them back to life normally okay let me I'm just I'm trying to get there I right. normally you have to be submerged in the Lazarus pit Correct. for some period of time and it can it can heal injuries, it can extend life, yeah. and it can bring you even back to life if you're dead, you know, for, and for, to some extent. In the comic book lore. But in the comic books, it would cause temporary insanity. That was one of the kind of downsides of the Lazarus Pit, was that if you went in there, it would drive you insane. And one of the reasons why the Red Hood became the Red Hood was because he was put in the Lazarus Pit and resurrected, and he became insane when he came out of Lazarus Pit and created this new personality called the Red Hood and which is why it happened the way that it did. That So now you're going to use rain to heal people and they're not going to become crazy? And oh, by the way, if you could put a completely healthy person inside the Lazarus Pit, it would kill you. So all the other people who aren't killed by the toxin would have died. Hmm. Just a little things like that kind of bother me. Now... Again, I'll give them a little creative freedom. Yeah. It was an inventive way to kind of come up with a solution to the problem. All right. But that was one that was like, oh, my God, they're stretching big time here. Right? Um, so well, that was one I had a big problem with. I, I can see that. Uh, I, I, I didn't have that much of a problem with it, but I can see where you're coming from with, you know, the insanity. And I, I just thought it was very and comic both, And both, in this show, both Red Hood or, you know, Jason Todd and Dick Grayson went in the Lazarus yeah. pit and came out and they weren't insane. No. You know, yeah. I mean, it, it's like, come on. You know, even, Look, even in when they used the Lazarus pit, I'm just going to make an aside here. There was a Lazarus pit in uh, Legends of Tomorrow, the TV show. Uh-huh. And um, in, in Arrow, the TV show, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I remember that. Right? The Arrow TV show, um, who plays um, his. The Queen. Well, not him, but his girlfriend in the show. It, it, her, she ends up becoming Black Siren, but um, her sister was the one who died in the Arrow episode, but then she ended up being on Legends of Tomorrow. The uh-huh. way they brought her back was through the Lazarus Pit, and she went insane for a period of time, and then she kind of had to get through her insanity on the Arrow TV show, and then she ended up going on Legends of Tomorrow. She okay. was uh, White Canary, at, right, at, right. you know, right? Yeah. But it's like... Yeah, they had this temporary period of insanity where the fighter for like five episodes, she was an enemy, and then all of a sudden she kind of came out of it. And, that, and that's what's happened in the comic books before, too. But, I mean, I mean, that was, I, I just, I was like, okay, all right, they're, they're just, re- they really have to figure out how to get through this really fast. Yeah. And that was one way they did it. Yeah, it was breakneck speed, that's for yeah. sure. I'll hit you with another one. Okay. Didn't Donna Troy die from electricity? She <laughs> died from electricity. But here she is with the <laughs> and lasso, and electricity is streaming. It's just lightning. It's, it's streaming down her her lasso. And they're like, Donna, her not again. And she's like, it's just lightning, you know. And then she, I'm like, but didn't you die from electricity before? Oh. I and, and and you and I talked about that at the beginning of the season. The way that she died last season ridiculous was ridiculous. She's you know. And, and again, these little plot holes. This tower, this this tower at the at the circus falls down. It's going to hit a little girl. She runs over and catches it. Oh, by the way, Connor Kent, who is the fastest and the strongest, and all by the way, invulnerable, could have run over there and caught it just as fast. But he's just standing there watching her do it, and it kills her. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, come on. I know. You know. So hey, all right. Let, let's let's kind of look. It got to the crescendo. They defeat Scarecrow. They beat beat his plans. Batman does end up coming back and yeah. thanks Dick Grayson for saving Gotham and all this other stuff. And and the team ends up going back to San Francisco yeah. with the exception of Tim Drake. Oh, no, they no, bring they, Tim they Drake. Bring Jean- but uh, Donna Troy stays yeah. in Gotham. We're not really sure why or what uh, she's Artemis. Doing. She might join Artemis. Yeah, and um, another comic book Easter egg from the show. Um, Artemis is a... Um, it's been in the Arrowverse TV shows as yeah. well. It's it's a, like a secret super organization. We kind of find out that they um, had been working behind the scenes as part of the Gotham City PD, and you know that they were there to kind of help things along, and they're part of the recovery and everything else. Well, the person in charge of Artemis is 
Roy Har- Harper, and in the comic books, Roy Harper is the Red Arrow. You've if you've watched, yeah, yeah, um, uh, Young Justice, he's the that's yeah. Roy Harper, right? Yeah. So uh, that's another comic book Easter egg. But yeah, she might be working with them and helping them out or whatever. But I think uh, we're going to get Roy Harper at some point. Maybe we'll yeah. see that character. Yeah, I mean that would be a, a good one. And again, we're looking at. I mean, the Young Justice cartoon that I, t- I told you about is very much building on that Teen Titans kind yeah. of roster of, of characters, right? So, hey, look, here's what I'll say about the show overall. I'm glad it's here. I'm glad I had it to watch. I love the actors they've put yeah. into these characters. Agreed. I think each one of them does a great job portraying their character. Yeah. Um, even the kind of the, 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 the bad writing and the bad plot points. Look, they all did the best they could with what they were given from a, from a content perspective. But they're all great. They're very well cast. They play those characters well. The costumes are fantastic. Um, you know, these are characters that we know and love, and it's it's really good. I just hope that the writing gets better. I mean, I think I that the writing was yeah. bad this season, without question. Some things I loved: uh, the Nightwing fight when he drops into um, Wayne Manor. I thought that was really cool. He he gets his sticks into a staff, and he's fighting with the staff, Newsy which fighting. was kind of cool. Police, Gotham City Police Department, I, unbelievable! All over Wayne Manor and in the Batcave. I would have, I would have almost accepted it more if the Red Hood and Scarecrow had kind of built their own kind of gang of people, and that's who were their lackeys. But to use the Gotham City Police Department, I mean, come on! I know. I, I told you that for me, that yeah. was a that was a jump. The in shark. the Batcave, yeah. and again, to your point. Why didn't they get take back Wayne Manor a long time ago? Yeah. What were they waiting for? What, what, what was their fear of going there and, and taking it over? They were able to do it in this episode. Why did it take them so long? Yeah. yeah I, well, again, I, you're right. I, I love, I'm invested in the characters. I really like them. I do like the show. It just seemed that it, there were, there were just so many issues, little nitpicky issues. Maybe I'm a dick. Maybe, maybe I have no reason to. To be this way, but I just I have a feeling because I'm talking to other people about the show and they seem to feel the same way. I mean, G- Greg Vire said the same thing, so uh, you know I don't know. But hey, they're I, making the season four. We know that. I'll be in if you if you see. I mean, I thought season two was their best season, which was the one with uh, Deathstroke. That was just a fantastic season. That was awesome. Um, I, you know, I, I hope that they're gonna. Find some big bad for them to fight or some team of individuals to fight. I mean, I think it would be awesome. I do think these characters are great. Now, if you look at the way the show looks now versus when it started, the budget has been increased tenfold. The special effects are better. The costumes are better. Um, I think they're going to continue to invest. I mean, DC has made it clear that these properties they have on HBO Max have a future I mean, they're, they've made Doom Patrol. They've made this. Those are the kind of two of the shows that started early, and they're continuing to make those. They're now bringing new ones out. I think it's going to hopefully get better. I, like I said, just hire some better people to write write the story. <laughs> I agree, one hundred percent. Season three is over. They kind of cleaned. The, they tied up a lot of uh, loose ends. They didn't answer everything. Like, why is Bruce Wayne trying to kill himself in a giant castle? Uh, that's still open. <laughs> I'm not really sure about that, but. At least they tied up a lot of stuff in Gotham, and now they can go to San Francisco and start a new season with bringing maybe some new characters, and and see what happens. Lost Loki. We lost Loki. All right, well, we'll tie that one off, and uh, we'll move into some news for the week. Let's go. Uh, We've got, uh, you mentioned, you burnt this up. So there was some promo art for Ms. Marvel. Why don't you talk about this one? So Ms. Marvel, in the the comic, she... What's it called? In, in, in Biggins herself, she makes she like uh, makes her fists really big and can make her arms stretch and uh, things like that. But physically, she can do that. That's like her power, and she's super strong. So right? in, in the comic books, she's she's actually an Inhuman. Uh, she went through Terra Genesis, which is how the inhumans, the crystals, yep, the Inhumans get their powers in the comic books. She's she's an Inhuman, and her. She can uh, manipulate the mass of her body because she can draw upon or create more mass than she has from past and future versions of herself. So as a matter of fact, she has some like inherent time travel abilities and that when her hands get big and her arms get really long, it's actually her adding more mass to herself from her past and future self. It's, it's a weird thing. 
But yes, I mean, we've got Ms. Marvel, um, the action figure up here on the front, but she has these, I mean, think about Mr. Fantastic can make this like giant fist and, and yeah. you know, and that's kind of what she does, but her, her fists have more mass to them. Mr. Fantastic is just stretching his skin. Yeah. She actually makes like a giant fist, right? right? Could, yeah. Um, so okay. those abilities, you say, are now potentially not going to be what her abilities are in her television show. Yeah, so what they're saying is that her um, her abilities now will be constructs. Very similar to what the Green Lantern does, where he creates uh. these um, giant fists of energy instead of creating so more it's, mass. it's energy? It, it's more energy, yeah. So she will create like giant energy fists, and she will have more... Uh, constructs uh, instead of embigging herself or making her so it's not going to be a, 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 a I mean I guess it'll be interesting to see if they do it like is it a mystical power is it a technology based power no because she she is an inventor in the comics as well she's a very smart person she's like a genius so the question is does she invent something that allows her to create these constructs that'll be interesting to find out it'll be great if they use the Terrigen crystals and that's how she uh, gains her power. yeah we'll figure that out yeah that that's I mean, we're going well, to do you a know, whole we, we, We've had this theory for some time, and we know this based on some of the pri prior um, plans that Marvel had. They did plan on introducing the Inhumans into the MCU at some point in time. They originally had an Inhumans movie on the schedule. It was in the plans, future plans of the MCU for some time. They chose, for some reason, to do a television show of the Inhumans and introduce the characters that way through ABC television, um, and it was horrible. Yeah, it was terrible. I mean, it was it could have been done any worse. Um, those characters are fantastic, and the Inhumans themselves are just great characters, and they wasted it. And so, they're, obviously, we're going to do the movie. They also had featured the Inhumans in the Agents of Shield. Um, television show that they had on for several years they were in there as well as a matter of fact one of the characters on agents of shield quake is an inhuman so they went through that whole thing so they kind of featured him there but we thought that the mcu was going to have them so this would be a really interesting and kind of creative way to introduce the concept of inhumans and maybe the inhuman characters in the mcu through disney plus series maybe we find out she's an inhuman she gets her power through terror genesis well, who are Inhumans? What is Terra Genesis? Right. Maybe we find out who the Inhumans are. We get a new actor and actress to play Black Bolt. And, yeah, that'd be cool. And, and um, uh, what's her name? Medusa. Uh, that would just be really cool. I mean, yeah. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. As soon as that show, I think they pushed it back because of her origins. You know? Like, I think they need a movie to kind of break in either the mutants or inhuman to uh, before they show that show. Well, they had a few production delays, I believe. That that was one of the series that we were supposed to get this year. We were that told one it was is coming. in the can. That that series, Miss um, Marvel, is done. It's in the can, with the exception of special effects. And I think that that's where they came up with the delay. The delay was in finishing off the special effects, and we'll get into that when we talk about our topic of the week this week, but I think they had some um, issues with finishing the show from a special effects perspective, which is why they were able to do Hawkeye, because Hawkeye doesn't have as many special effects. Yeah. So you can imagine this, the content and the characters don't require that many special effects, yeah. whereas Ms. Marvel does. Yeah. And uh, but hopefully, concepts, but... I think that that, sh that sh Disney Plus show will come out early next year, probably in the January time timeline, if we're, if we're lucky. Yeah. We'll probably hear... I have a feeling we're going to hear about that during D23 or the Disney Plus Day that they're going to have. Yeah. We'll find that out for sure. I we'll hope get so. dates associated yeah, with that I'm looking that forward stuff. To, yeah. uh, to some announcements. But that's the next one coming, right? That's what we know after Hawkeye. That's the next Disney Plus series coming. I would think so, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Moon Knight will be after that and, and She-Hulk will be after that as well. I think She-Hulk might come before Moon Knight. Yeah. I think She-Hulk started filming, but who knows? Yeah. Depends on how much CGI is in it, right? Yeah. 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 All right, well, that was a cool uh, news item there. And then, uh, you know, we got some news this week that uh, Marvel kind of hinted at, uh, made a semi-official announcement that they are working on a solo Hulk film. Yeah, I mean... That'd be cool. We, were, we have been told for many, many years that a solo Hulk film would never happen. As a matter of fact, Mark Ruffalo has um, publicly stated... A, a standalone Hulk movie, another standalone Hulk movie, will never happen. Universal owns the rights to the Hulk character. Um, Marvel and Universal don't know how to play well together. Uh, so Solo Hulk movie will just not happen because of that. That's right. And we've seen the Hulk featured in 
all the Avengers movies in Thor Ragnarok and others, but we've never seen another solo Hulk movie since the uh, incredible Hulk movie that we had with Ed Norton. Yeah. Uh, there hasn't been another one. So, And Mark Ruffalo said, well, this is probably not happening. And now we kind of gotten an indication that their uh, solo Hulk movie is in development, which means they've made some agreement with Universal and this is happening and the storyline is going to be based on potentially the World War Hulk comic book storyline. Man, that'd be great. That'd be great. So it's interesting to me in that they they pulled from that storyline a little bit when they did Thor Ragnarok. Right. So the concept behind that storyline is that um, Hulk gets banished from Earth by the Illuminati. So the Illuminati in the comic books is a conglomerate of the greatest superpowered minds and it's um there's been different versions of it but the original version i believe was mr fantastic professor x um doctor black strange. bolt black bolt doctor strange and black panther the five of them oh and uh yes namor namor and they collectively determined that the hulk was Probably the biggest risk that the Earth faced from a just a super powered individual perspective. He was too much of a risk. There was a, a point in time where he had you know gone mad and caused a bunch of destruction across a number of cities. And they're like, we got to do something about this. And they come up with a plan to jettison him into space. They basically capture him, you know, through enormous amounts of effort and jettison him into space in a spaceship. And they think that they're sending him off to a desolate planet. His spaceship kind of takes a, you know, gets hit by an asteroid and ends up on Sakaar, which is the planet we saw in Thor Ragnarok. Right. And he ends up going onto that planet, becoming the planet's champion. He ends up getting married, having children, and his wife gets killed. And he blames the Illuminati for this. And he gets pissed. Like, the most pissed that Hulk has ever been. And as we know, the more angry Hulk is, the bigger, bigger, stronger, stronger and more dangerous he is. He finds a way back to Earth, and he just starts raging, uh, just raining destruction down on Earth, and just starts killing heroes, and just taking it out on everybody, and it's, like, really bad. And so... Part of that storyline was done in Thor Ragnar. We saw Sakaar. We saw that kind of whole concept of him going... Gladiator, warrior type fighting. Becoming the champion of Sakaar. Yeah. But the concept of him becoming very enraged and angry to the point where he can't be controlled and he's he's very destructive, we haven't seen that. So maybe they kind of skipped that sending him off to space part and now they're just focused on something happening to Bruce Banner or the Hulk character here on Earth that makes him so angry that he becomes just this massive danger that everybody has to fight against. We know at the end of Shang-Chi and the end credit scenes that Bruce Banner is now taking on his human form, which means... He's no longer Professor Hulk. He's no longer Professor Hulk, no longer sharing uh, reality with the Hulk. So that'll be interesting. I'm curious. That's a big answer that I'm looking for in, I hope, She-Hulk. So Well, as we've kind of alluded to in the past, I, I think one of the reasons they did that, well, twofold, it's really expensive to make Mark Ruffalo the Hulk from a CGI perspective, so maybe they just kind of shortcut it for the end credit scene for Shang-Chi, but um, the other concept being, we know that Jennifer Walters, the She-Hulk character, becomes the She-Hulk because she's in a devastating... She's the cousin of Bruce Banner. She's Bruce Banner's cousin. She's in a devastating, life-threatening accident. And she has a very... she's shot. I I can't remember what... what, Yes. I think she's shot. And she needs a blood transfusion. And she has a very unique blood type that the only person that could do it was her cousin, Bruce. And Mm -hmm. Bruce is like, you can't use my blood. And he's like, well, she's going to die. And so they make the decision, well, I guess I have to. And then she ends up becoming the She-Hulk character because of that. So if he's the Hulk, Professor Hulk or the regular Hulk, there's no way they get a blood transfusion from that character. It has to be Bruce Banner while he's in human form. So, yeah, we're going to probably get all those answers in the She-Hulk series. I need those answers, Professor. Yeah, let's do it. Good. Uh, So Eternals movie... 
the premiere was, I guess, like a, a week and a half ago, a little over a week ago. A week, was it last Monday? Or yeah. The, yeah, last Monday was the uh, the premiere. Uh, there was yeah. an embargo on... Um, Which and, fucking those journalists broke. I mean, I'm, I'm well, pissed about this. I, I want to go off on this, please. Well, there's two things I want to talk about here. The first one being um, there were massive leaks right after. So we, I think we were recording our show last Monday. Yeah. Tuesday, there were massive leaks online about the end credit scenes in Eternals. Unbelievable. And look, I, I'm going to say, here's what I'm going to say. You have a premiere of your movie. And you invite to the premiere of that movie all of these internet influencers, content creators, and people that review Marvel movies for a living. Okay? This is what they do for a profession. Yeah. Right? These are people, and I'm not saying that these were the ones responsible, but you know, let's use it for example, New Rockstars has a YouTube channel dedicated to Marvel content. And yep. so what they do to make money is make Marvel content and talk about Marvel movies. And they were there. They were at the premiere. We saw them there. Yep. So that's who you Aaron invite. Foss. That's who you invite. You invite them and a bunch of other people of that ilk. Somehow don't invite Super Talk. Come on, people. Yeah, that's ridiculous. We're tight-lipped, by the way. Even right, though right. We'll sign whatever NDA you want us to sign. I'm surprised these fuckers didn't. Right, but I'm sure they did. But here's the point, Tony. Titanium, please. Tit yes. Here's the point. They go to these premieres... And you're expecting them to keep what they saw secret. Right. Don't go off on the internet and talk about this and tell everybody because you're going to spoil the movie for people. You're going to spoil end credit scenes. You're going to do all this stuff. But hype yet, it up. Right. But yet, this is what they do for a living. This is how they make their money. Now, if I'm an internet influencer and I have a YouTube channel dedicated to talking about rumors and innuendo about Marvel content, I go see this and I'm like, Wow. Let me go create a fake Twitter account and tweet out what I saw. And then on my show, I can talk about somebody leaked Correct. this content. Oh, my gosh. This Driving is just a travesty. Awful. But let's talk about it. Now that it's out there, let's talk about it. So, look, don't expect that this isn't going to happen. The same thing happened with um, Venom Let There Be Carnage. Yeah. I mean, they're standing up there freaking um, the actors and the directors are standing up there saying... What you see here stays here. Don't talk about this. And then it leaks out and you're surprised. Yeah. Don't be surprised. I we we gotta get rid of these early show premieres. I'm sorry. If but, you're but gonna look, do them, do them the night before it's released to the general public. Do it the night before where people have the choice to it, go dark for one day. The, it used to be the Monday before the, the it would so they would have the premiere on Monday and it would come out in the movies on Friday. Do it on Wednesday. But here's the thing. Who used to go to premieres? It was the actors and the actresses and their families and, and Hollywood people. And who are they inviting to these things now? It's now a spectacle. They want to get all these internet influencers there because they're going to help promote the movie. Yeah. So they've chosen to invite these people that have a, made their living on leaking this content or talking about leaks of this content. Another thing I can't stand are some of these influencers, some of these people that make their living doing this. That are writers that used to be writers for you know different variety and and well Wall Street Journal and yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you know MCU Direct all these comicbook.coms they used to, and then what they do is they talk about the leak and then they blame people for the leak but yet they're they perpetuating keep, it they are they keep perpetuating it and they keep bringing it up and talking about it. And, and I'm okay with them going to see these things early and then coming back and giving their views without any spoilers on what they feel, how that... Because that's and what, that's what I've, I've watched. Read. That's what I've watched and I've read. But these leaking motherfuckers that tell these leaks and ruin it for the rest of us, it's upsetting. Do you know that Endgame didn't have a premiere because of this? They never did that. And that movie did okay. So I did, right, Professor? I don't know. I'm just titanium. But that movie did okay, yeah. right? Yeah, so why do we need to have these hooty snooty bitches go to this premiere and then blab their mouth off and then backdoor it by, you know, blaming the people that spoiled it, by perpetuating the spoil and having it have legs? It just drives me crazy that these entitled motherfuckers would ruin something so special uh, whatever. I'm. I'm not saying that 
that you shouldn't have a premiere, just have it the day before the, the regular Joe Schmoes like us that are paying for it, that actually pay to go it to see the movie. These guys didn't pay a dime for that. All they did was get their Instagram shots and more footage for their shows to promote themselves. It only makes them better to promote themselves. I mean, we're the ones paying the hey, bills. Hey, look, look, Marvel, don't be surprised when this shit happens. That's my point yeah. is you are perpetuating this happening. You're you're the ones that are... So don't be surprised. They're upset. Oh, I can't believe people would leak this. Are you kidding? That's what they, they do are. for a living. A living. That's what they do. Right. They scour. And they're never going to do it under their account. No. They're going to do it under some fake account. And, and they're, they're going to talk it, about they're it. They're going to do it on Reddit or somewhere right. like four channels or somewhere secretive. And then it'll spread like wildfire because right. any little bit of news spreads like don't, wildfire. Just don't be surprised. Yeah. But anyway. Anyway. What I wanted to talk about was the early, they, there was an embargo on um, non-spoiler reviews until yesterday, Sunday. Um, and so we start, started getting some of the early reviews. Now these influencers, anybody, any reviewer could go out and, and give you their first impressions of the movies without giving any spoilers away. They, they were embargoed from giving away any specifics about the movie. They could just give their general impressions. The early returns are favorable, not spectacular. They're not Shang-Chi numbers. I mean, no. Right? I think no. it's got like a 71 on Rotten Tomatoes so uh, far. 78? Something like that. It's yeah. in the 70s. 87 or 78. But Shang-Chi had like a 94. Oh, it was off the charts. Yeah, it's it ridiculous. The but they were favorable. Now, the one thing that I've heard is that if you're going to this movie expecting a traditional Marvel movie, it's not. you're going to be disappointed. Yeah, It is very much a very big movie. It is visually spectacular. Yep. It sets up a lot of important things. Yep. It tells, it gives some backstory to some of the stuff that's already happened in the MCU. Yeah. And it tells some important stories about what's going to happen in the MCU. But there's a lot of dramatic scenes and a lot of talking between characters explaining to us why these characters exist, where they came from, who's responsible for them, what their future is, and what they've had an influence on in the MCU from this point in the past and going forward. Yeah. That's what you should expect. Don't expect this knockdown, drag out action movie. You know, here's the difference. If you're going there expecting Avengers Infinity War, you're going to be disappointed. Right. But if you go there expecting Avengers Endgame, you'll be pleased. So Avengers Endgame was much more of a dramatic movie about the plot and about the storyline, about the characters and about uh, the I impact. I think still the Endgame had way more action sequences. But only at the end. Was, yeah. Well, only at the end. Yeah, a large majority of the movie did not have any action scenes. Yeah, only at the end of the movie, in the last you know thirty minutes, or even it was like a twenty minute fight. But the whole rest of the movie was was a dramatic movie about what's happened to these characters yeah. and the impact and everything else. It's definitely a relationship, uh, a love story type movie, and character building. And you're right. Can I can I say just one thing uh, uh, about Super Talk podcast here? One of the spoilers we, Professor, you did call. Early on in in another episode of ours, I'm not going to say what it is. Why I'm, not? I'm not? It's out there. We're not spoiling anything. I just it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth even to say it. But you can say it. But we did we did call the the early 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 on that. Well, so what Titanium's referring to is that I can't say it. I just can't bring myself to say it. I'll. Say, it's out there. I mean, people probably already. I know. If you're watching this show. You probably have already heard it because you like our content. And you like content like ours. But the fact that they came on one of the end credit scenes features a very popular actor. Uh, one Direction singer. <laughs> <laughs> being featured in a role, uh, potentially in the future, but has relations to this particular movie, right? And we were going through, I think it was episode 19 of Super Talk, we talked about some heroes and villains that we were, we were excited to see coming to the MCU some point in the future. We did a fan casting. Right. Uh, we said who, who would we be thought, who would be yeah. good people to be in, in casting these roles. And he was one person that I brought up that said, I, I think this person's going to be in the MCU at some point in time. And I said, I think it'd be a good get for Marvel. And he's the one who's in the end credit scene. Which is a, no, you say it. I'm not saying it. <laughs> I, can't, I can't bring myself to say it. But yes, you were you were right, and we we called it very very early. Um, so maybe we're we're starting on something here. Maybe we're starting to 
Hey, we're getting dialed in. Just Maybe might, we're dialed in. Yeah, might we've got kind of some, you know our, our finger on the pulse of the MCU to some extent. <laughs> right? I don't Finally, know. it only took us you know forty two episodes. I, you know, but but Titanium, that's I think the beauty of our shows. We're doing our show from the fans' perspective, and you were talking about episode nineteen was very much a fan casting yeah. episode. It wasn't me. Going out and saying, "Oh, let me let me go look up all the rumors or all these people that are like linked to Marvel, no. you know, roles." It's like, who would I like to see yes. cast in these roles as a fan? As a fan, and that's but that's the perspective we're trying to bring to our listening audience and our viewing audience. And and you know, hey, we we might have gotten one right. Now, the character I had him linked to is not the character who he's portraying in that end credit scene, but. I had him kind of as one guy that I thought would be in the MCU and be a good person. Spot on. People are going to be excited. I'm excited. I'm thrilled that he's going to be in the MCU. Yeah. But I'm still not saying his name. <laughs> oh, neither am I. Okay. I I'm, not gonna, I'm, I'm going to join you on that one. Very good. Um, and then I, I got another one that you might not have in your notes there. But, uh, hey, Sony came out and announced two new Marvel projects for 2023. Um, they made an announcement about a week ago that they have two new projects on the schedule for 2023, Sony does, and they're Marvel Studio projects. Wow. So could that have anything to do with them ending uh, the Marvel relationship with Spider-Man? No. It's completely, what are you talking about, ending it? No, it's actually perpetuating it. They, oh, because... These are projects that are Marvel projects, by Sony and Marvel together. So Marvel, Marvel so what, came out and said that... Spider-Man No Way Home is the end of the Spider-Man, uh, their... Trilogy. Trilogy, yeah. But that doesn't mean that's the end of Spider-Man in the MCU. Okay. Not at all. They're, they're just saying that this is the end of the trilogy. They're, they're going to have other projects. And I don't expect Tom Holland to go anywhere. No. He what, better not. What Sony came out and said is now, with the end of... We'll kind of harken back to... And again, another spoiler... Venom, Let There Be Carnage, end credit scene. Venom is now in the MCU universe. Somehow, some way, something happened that he's now part of the MCU. And Sony and Marvel, and I told you this before, Titanium, that their plans and Marvel's plans are one and the same. They are perpetuating each other's vision. They are moving forward together. What Sony is doing is only helping Marvel. What Marvel's doing is only helping Sony. Yeah. And they're going to be able to use each other's characters in each of these movies. So what Sony came out and said is, we've got two new projects. We already announced one. So they did already announce they're making the Craven the, Craven the Hunt and Hunter movie. That yeah. movie is coming out in January of 2023. That's already been announced. Yeah. That's already being done. It's already been cast. Right. Uh, uh, who is it? It's... Uh, Rick... Um... Yeah, can't remember his name. The guy from uh, the guy from Suicide Squad, right? No, um, no. It's Craven Anthony, the Hunter is, is, is Quicksilver. Quicksilver. An Anthony Taylor Johnson. Yes, yes. So they're doing the uh, Craven the Hunter movie in January 2023. But they came out and said we have two new Marvel projects for 2023. One's going to be in that's lit. Yes, that they've are. They're just. Reserving the dates. Um, one will be June 23rd, 2023. The other one will be October 6th, 2023. Wow. We don't know what they are. We don't know, have no announcements about, you know, the con you know the characters, who it's going to be. But these are Sony movies that are, will be in the MCU that will be featuring Sony characters. Now, as we've talked about before, I have a feeling that that first one might be Venom versus Spider-Man, or Venom and Spider-Man, to some extent, what the Venom Let There Be Carnage end credit scene kind of alluded to, and the fact that they're bringing that character in, they got to bring him in somehow. I think that that's when that first one might be done in in the June time frame of 2023. That would just make a lot of sense. The October one. There's a lot of things. It could be a Sinister Six movie. It right. could be. There's a lot of things it could be, but. Um, they announced, Sony came out and said, We're, we've got two new Marvel-based projects in 2023 that are coming out. Can't tell you what they are yet, but we've got these dates scheduled on the calendar for our releases that year. Awesome. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really good cool. news. Really cool. All right. Well, let's get into our topic of the week this week. Um, that's always brought to you by our friends over at Studio GG Studios. Studio GG Studios, home of the man band, corner of the cop. Yeah. We've got... Uh, when is... 
freaking Buffalo Tim coming out? Oh, you talked about the flood last week. Is that like been resolved, or, or this, is the studio back up and running again? They literally had to bring in um, uh, a new sump pump to a- install it outside. They grinded down the cement. Uh, they've treated the cement and sealed it with like uh, you know waterproofing seal. They're painting it. They're moving equipment back in. I would foresee Buffalo Tim coming in the next couple of weeks. All right. So we'll look forward to that. We'll uh, obviously put a, a link to their page in our show notes. Like we Studio do every G. Week. Love those silly bastards. Please go support them. Uh, we've got our, our topic of the week this week is going to go over the new movie schedule. And we're going to go over all the comic book based movies that are coming out in the 2022 year. So next year. Um, a week ago, as actually a week ago today, Marvel came out. And made an announcement and said they were delaying the release of every movie on their schedule by one um, date. So we had gotten all the dates. And di- of- by, by date, you mean one movie slot that they have dated, correct? They had given us the schedule through mid-2023 of all the movies that were coming out. And the first one on that schedule was Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. In March, I think it was originally March twenty fifth, March twenty fifth mm-hmm. of twenty twenty two, they came out and said we're moving everything one slot forward. So there was a date. Uh, I believe they had Thor, um, Love and Thunder scheduled May for 6th. May sixth. They moved Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Magic from March twenty first, twenty fifth to May sixth, and they shifted Thor, Love and Thunder to the July slot. They so we'll go over the the, the shift. Basically, what they did is say we're canceling the March movie. Yeah. No, no movie's going to be released in March. We're going to move Doctor Strange to May. So instead of four, we're getting three. Right. But every movie is basically being shifted forward one. And there was a big, like, kind of, uh, you know, whoa, what does this mean for the future of the MCU? Are they having other delays? Is this COVID related? What's going on? Why? There's an actor strike, too, out there in Hollywood. There's some striking going on. Look, so here's what I'll say this stuff happens in Hollywood all the time. Yeah. Right. There's delays. There's issues. So this stuff happens all the time. Yeah. Marvel, to some extent, kind of handcuffs themselves when they already attach release dates to projects way in advance because they want to get us excited and they want to get us, you know, kind of hyped up about what's coming. And they tell us this stuff like two years in advance sometimes. And they start filming and pre production and filming and then post production also understanding that they have a schedule to meet and they're trying to hit these dates. I would rather them miss a date and do it right than hit a date and do it wrong. I mean, I think both you and I would, would say that. I agree. Now, while I'm disappointed that we're not getting as many movies next year and that everything's being delayed a little bit, look, we're, for Doctor Strange, we're only talking about a month and a half, so it's not like that big of a deal, right? It's like six weeks, so it's not that big of a delay. That being said, the reason for these delays, look, we're still operating in a global pandemic. While things are better and people are back to theaters and life is getting back to normal, it's not 100% normal. As a matter of fact, every studio, every production house, every special effects shop, everybody is operating under restrictions that are COVID-19 related, whether it's the number of people that can be in the building at the same time, whether you have to wear a mask, whether you can be indoors and outdoors and all that, there's still restrictions. And oh, by the way, there's a finite number of these places in Hollywood. So imagine the demand on a special effects shop, for example. Guys who are finishing special effects on a movie. There's only so many of those places that do these things, and they're trying to catch up with the backlog that was created by all these original delays, and now they're being forced to kind of work really hard. Well, they're still restricted. Sometimes they have trouble hiring people or retaining people or people don't want to come back to work. There's lots of things. And so that's what this was the delay was about. It was about restrictions, lack of resources, lack of time to get stuff done in the right time. Just straight up production issues. Yeah. They, they, they needed more time to finish special effects, CGI effects, and just basic production issues. They're like, we just need They're more like, time. Why are we torturing ourselves trying to hit this and put out perhaps a subpar product why don't we just push everything back? It's nothing serious. It's let's not, you know, Marvel isn't be, losing their touch. It's just something that actually, as a fan, if you analyze it and look at it constructively, it's going to be better for us. Yeah. 
And, and, and frankly, like I said, I'd rather them delay it and do it right than, than not delay it and, and get it wrong or have to push it. And, and these are not related to people aren't going back to the theaters or not supporting movies anymore. So no. None of that. It's just, hey, they just basically came out and said, look, we just need more time to get these things done. And, you know, there's been all kinds of rumors out there about the next Spider-Man trailer. It was supposed to come out this week and people are disappointed it didn't. They're like, well, maybe it comes out next week. No, it's probably been November now. And the fact of the matter is it's not done. They haven't been able to finish it yet. So, yeah. look, just give them some time. I mean, it's going to happen. I don't care if we get another trailer, to or be really, honest with frankly. you. Really, yeah. frankly. I'm good with what I have. Yeah, I'm we're pretty gonna excited. Get one, but, you know. I'm pretty excited about that down movie. A I'm bit. still iffy about Eternals. Maybe after I see it, I'll be changed. But let's go over the list. Why don't yeah. you read the list? Well, so, first thing on the list. This, this year's projects, 2021 projects, were unaffected. So, we're getting the Eternals movie. It's coming out, you know, a week from, from Friday. We're going to get that movie November 5th. It has not been affected by this delay at all and will not be affected. I'm going to go ahead and call it the year 2022, the year of DC. Well, we'll see. We'll kind of, we'll, we'll get into that, but we'll see. I mean, they got a lot riding on that year for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, so we got that uh, Eternals November 5th. We've got Spider-Man No Way Home December, December 17th. Those movies are coming out. They're this on year. the schedule. They're going to be here 2021. But from December 17th, until now, May, we're not getting another movie from Marvel Studios, and we'll kind of talk about the schedule. But we are getting a lot of other comic book-based movies before then, yep. and you and I have alluded to some of those. So the first one that's going to hit is, a little more than a month later, Morbius is coming out January 21st, Finally. 2023. And you got, a nice, you got a nice comic book up yeah. here for the YouTube folks, uh, the Morbius comic book up there. Yeah, so that movie is, you know, this movie... <laughs> was literally, I think, a week or two away from being released in 2020 when the world shut down. Yeah. So I think it was originally scheduled for an end of March release in 2020. And the pandemic hit, theaters closed, and you know Sony said, nope, we're pushing it. And they pushed it a couple times, and then eventually they said, we're pushing it all the way to 2022. Yeah. Um, which tells me a couple things. One... It wasn't as integral as far as a plot perspective. There was no kind of tie-ins to Spider-Man or Venom or anything else. It was just kind of a standalone movie, and they could afford to move it. There was no real kind of integrated plot points there. Yeah. And the other thing is that that character's introduction did not have a major importance in Sony's plans or Marvel's plans at that point in time that they needed to promote it that quickly, yeah. they could push it out. And I think that that's what they did. But we're getting it in that's January. Just, yeah, I'm, I can't wait. I'm, I'm, I well, we don't know how good We did get another trailer for that. Uh, I, think, I told you, I went and saw a movie last week with my wife, and there was a new trailer yeah. in the theaters with a, a few new scenes. So the promotion for that movie is ramping up now, but we're getting it in January. January 17th. That's, that's great. Gonna be, January 21st. That's going to be awesome. Great news. Uh, and then the next one is in March. March 4th, The Batman drops in theaters. The Badass yeah. drops in theaters. Yeah. I cannot wait for this movie. This this is going to be a home run. Uh, I just I just have a feeling it's going to be an absolute home run. Robert Pattinson. Morbius, looking forward to it. I think it's going to be great. But The Batman? Psh. Well, Jared Leto looks great in Morbius. I think that movie's going to be really good. And he's just a great actor. And yep. I think he'll do a great job with that character. And... I think Marvel and Sony have plans for that character going forward. We'll see. But the Batman movie, we, again, we got that new trailer for that movie last week after DC Fandom. Some new hype, new excitement. The movie's been done for a while. The cast and the director, or Matt Reeves, Matt Reeves is really excited about it. He's incredibly ready to go. And, and they're, they're going to be promoting the crap out of that movie here over the next couple of months. Kevin Feige said the Batman looks great. Well, he's a comic book fan. Yeah, Why he wouldn't he say that? I mean, he's worked in DC movies before. Great. I mean, he, yeah, he, he knows. Um, so then we got that in March. So again, we got January Morbius, the Batman in March. Then May 6th now is Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. It's been pushed to May 6th, but now that's coming out in May. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get that movie. And again, the hype around that movie is enormous. Uh, the theoretical plot, you know, who's going to be in it. And then we're going to see an X-Men in the movie. Is there going to be a crossover with the Ghost Rider? I mean, there's all kinds of crazy stuff happening there, but... We're looking forward to that. That's going to be like the next big MCU movies in May. After that, we have a little bit of a break until the summer. So the summer season hits. We're going to get July 8th, Thor Love and Thunder. 
So that movie has been in production for a long time now. They're finishing up, I think, primary uh, film, uh, primary principal photography. They're still filming scenes there, but that movie will be ready next July. Yeah. So uh, again, they're giving a little more time to kind of finish the special effects and everything, but that movie should be great. Awesome. Yeah, we're we're looking forward to that. And then also in July, Black Adam. Oh boy. Yeah. Three weeks later, July 29th, we get Black Adam, and that movie is going to be enormous. I oh, mean, yeah. look, you talk, you and I talked about this last week, Titanium. Um, look, Dwayne The Rock Johnson is a superstar in yeah. Hollywood. He's an A-list actor. I'm sure he's getting paid millions and millions of dollars for this movie, and he loves the character. He said he's born to play this character he can't wait for this movie. You know he's going to be promoting the crap out of it yeah. all next spring. Um, this is just going to be a home run for DC. His and, pet project. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's going to be awesome. And, and again, I can't remember a bad movie with, with Dwayne Johnson in it. Yeah. I just, it hasn't been one. I can, but yeah. He's... Well, Jumanji 2, maybe, I guess. Was that one <laughs> he's he's just a, a big-time Hollywood star yeah. and will pull... Yeah, yeah, and, and again, the, the teaser we got for that in fandom was just fantastic. So we're looking forward to that. Um, and then we get a little, another little bit of a break. But then October 7th, we get Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse 2 is coming in October. That is going to be enormous. So when Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse came out, I think in 2018 or 19, I can't remember. 18, when. yeah. It was a home run. Everybody loved it. It was yeah. a phenomenal movie. Everybody's like, oh my God, animated I can't film. believe an animated film does this well. And just the animation style and the plot and the characters and everybody loved it. They started working on the sequel literally right after that movie came out. So they've been, I mean, and as everybody knows, animation takes a lot longer to do because yeah. you got to draw every scene, you know, hand by hand. That takes a lot longer to do. They've been working on that for a good three and a half years, three, three and a half years. So that movie is coming out that October, and that's going to be another home run. I mean, I think they hit, they found a kind of a little pot of gold there from an animated movie perspective, and they got another one coming out in October. Yeah, that'll yeah. be great. Yeah. Yeah. But then, not too far after, we've got the Flash movie coming out that November. Um, and again, we saw a little teaser for this uh, during fandom last week. I'm sure we're going to get some more, maybe about six months from now. But look, that movie is going to have an impact in the DC universe. And I think the plot itself is going to dictate where they go with a lot of these characters. Agreed. Moving forward. Yeah. yeah. That should be interesting. Hopefully we get a little bit more next year. Yep. And then, gee, not much longer, uh, November 11th, right? A week later. November's going to be busy. We got Black Panther. Wakanda Forever. So that movie is the next MCU movie coming out November 11th, 2022. Again, lots of rumors about, you know, we we know that Namor is going to be in that movie. We, yeah. you know, have an idea, maybe a concept of what they're going to be doing with the Black Panther character. We're not really sure, but we're hoping they're going to do something fun. Uh, I did see something about somebody getting injured on set here recently. Uh, oh, Shuri, the actress that plays Shuri, got yeah. hurt on set, had to go to the hospital or something, but she's fine, supposedly. Uh, but. Rhea Wilson, who plays Ironheart. Yes. Uh, they were filming up at MIT, on the campus at MIT, and she was there with uh, some of the Dormelage, uh, some of those characters, and uh, Suri was there, and some kind of stunt happened. And uh, Letitia got, Wright, I believe. Is, is, is that a name? Yeah, okay. Letitia Wright is the... The actress's name, yes. Yeah, so she got hurt. Yeah, but she's better. She's yeah. fine. Yeah, but that, I mean, that movie is literally in production right now. They've been filming it for some time now. And, and again, that's now coming out uh, November 11th, 2022. And then to wrap up the year, we've got Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom coming out December 16th, 2022. So I, I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine comic book movies in 2022 alone and uh, not look, including the dc plus i mean uh the disney, the plus. disney plus shows we're not even talking about and and that's one thing when disney announced their delay or marvel announced their delay of this or shift of the movies one slot they're like we're gonna fill those gaps in time with D with disney plus content we've yeah. got some shows coming and we know look we have a feeling there's going to be Three, if not four, and maybe five Disney Plus shows coming out in 2022. So we know Ms. Marvel. 2023. 2022. 2022, okay. Mm -hmm. Next year. Okay. Ms. Marvel, 
She Hulk, yeah. um, Moon Knight, Moon Knight. We've got potentially Secret Iron Invasion. Groot. Secret Invasion is filming now. That might come out. We've got the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special around yeah. Christmas time. Uh-huh. So there's a bunch of stuff coming to Disney Plus next year. On top of all the Star Wars stuff they have coming too. Oh. So I mean, look, 2022 is already packed with comic book content. I mean, look, people, this stuff sells. It does well in the theaters. It makes money. Yeah. Uh, they're gonna and and again, I think Marvel will do a really good job of filling those gaps. Uh, in between these movies and the delays that we have they with, better. With, with Disney Plus. Our show yeah. depends on it. Yes, of course it does. <laughs> yeah. But that's what a great schedule we have. And that's yeah, that's just, awesome. We haven't even talked about 2023. We haven't even talked about the years after that. I think, and we'll kind of cover this on the show here in a few weeks, but I think when we get into the Disney Plus day and we get into yeah. D23, we're going to get so much news about what their plans are and where they're going with stuff, and we'll get some new dates associated with projects. Look, I'm looking forward to hearing about Fantastic Four, and we should get a date for that. We should get potentially casting news, things like that. We Blade. Should, when, Blade. When's that coming out? We'll hear about that, yeah. potentially. Uh, we'll get some dates attached to some of these Disney Plus um, uh, shows that we know are coming that are in Dr. production Doom. right now. Right. right. Uh, right. Nova. Let's, right. Let's see. I mean... Those are all X Men, uh, yeah, mutants, Deadpool three. Yeah. I mean, oh, my God. we haven't even talked about Deadpool I know. three. Yeah, so and it's I mean, happening. We know it's happening. So we've got a, a lot going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's ring the bell, Professor. Good right. show. Well, that's it for us this week. Uh, to get in touch with us on social media, hit us up via email, supertalkpodcast at outlook dot com or at supertalkpod on Twitter. Until then, stay super, everyone. And we're out. And we're out. And we're out. And we still managed to talk for an hour.